Hey friends, welcome to Worship at the Village this morning. My name is Chris Shaw and I'm the Marketing and Communications Coordinator here. And even in my job, I know that it's not well-written emails and fancy social graphics or videos that bring people to our church and bring people to a relationship with Jesus. But in fact, it's people just like you who are intentional about inviting friends to participate in our worship services and join them in following Jesus every day. And so that's why right now, before we really get started, I wanna invite you to click that share button and share this service with someone who you might think need it. You can use it on social media, you can send it in a text, you can send it in an email. All you have to do is click that button, write a quick message and send it their way and say, hey, I'd love for you to join me in church this morning. Um, Later in our service, I also want you to invite you to join with us in communion. So right now, if you want to go grab a cup of water or some juice and some bread or maybe a cracker, you can join with us during that time um, and share in communion together. We're going to get started right now with the song that our worship band recorded at a live conference earlier in 2019. Um, So sing along, or if you just feel more comfortable, you can just sit and Uh, invite the presence of God to be with you this morning by listening to these words, and I'll be back in just a moment. I was buried beneath my shame Who could carry that kind of weight
A big thanks to our worship team as they continue to use their gifts to help us worship together during this time. As we continue in our service this morning, I want to share with you a few things that we have coming up here at the Village and that you should be a part of. So the first thing is that I would love for you to click that share button. That share button is the best way to invite someone to join us here at the Village and to become a part of this community of Jesus followers who are focused on making disciples who make disciples who change the world. And so click that share button, share it with someone who you think might need a message of hope this morning and invite them to join us here during this service. What I didn't mention is that for every time the share button is clicked, we as the village give to our Go partner. And our current Go partner is our backpack feeding program that helps feed students who don't have the same access to food that they would during the school year. So throughout this time of COVID-19 and now stretching into the summer, you have helped feed hundreds of kids every week through this program. And we are incredibly grateful for that. Another way you can contribute to our backpack food program is by filling out a connect card. And our connect card is just a quick form that helps us to get to know you and it'll help you get connected with others at the village. And so for every new connect card we receive, we'll donate $5 to the backpack food program in your honor. And you can fill that out at thevillagenashville.com slash live. Speaking of getting connected, there's no better way to meet other village people, get plugged into a group, and learn who we are as the village and what we believe than to check out our online next gathering. And that is happening today at 1030, right after the service. So just head over to thevillagenashville.com slash next, and we'll register you there, and you can get connected with us, and we'll send you the link to join that. That's today at 1030. Um, If 2020 has taught me anything at all, it's that if life gives you lemons, it's our responsibility to make it into lemonade. And so while it won't look the same, we're excited to invite you to Scent Sunday next Sunday on July 26th between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. And it'll look a little bit different, but we'll have seven family-friendly and safe projects that you can participate in by purchasing and dropping off products products to help us feed our community and help resource students and teachers for the new school year. Not only that, but as the church scattered, we're inviting you to love and serve your neighbors all week long, all 168 hours long, with some additional ideas and projects that you can do with fan, friends or family. So head to thevillagenashville.com slash Sunday. We'll get you registered there, and you can also download the project guide to see what projects you'd like to do and what you can do all week long for this year's Scent Sunday. The Summer of Camp Village Kids continues as the Village Kids team is helping your kids celebrate summer and grow in love with God every week with some awesome new worship content. So head over to YouTube at youtube.com slash The Village Nashville to catch their weekly worship and that's available every Sunday at 7 a.m. And then if you want to get those camp bonuses, all that camp material is available at thevillagenashville.com slash camp. You can subscribe to that and get all of the Camp Village Kids fun, even catch up with what they've already put out there. And that is awesome. Our village youth are also meeting tonight. Uh, They are meeting via YouTube Live at 6 p.m., So if you're a 6th through 12th grader, be sure to check that out at thevillagenashville.com slash youth events and join them as they continue to discover what it looks like to be an everyday follower of Jesus. Lastly, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the village for your continued generosity towards our ministry fund and making things like Scent Sunday, Camp Village Kids, and our weekly worship happen. If you'd like to join us, and partner with us in these ministries, you can go to thevillagenashville.com slash give to give a one-time or recurring gift. 10% of everything we receive here at the village goes right back out into the community to help love and serve our neighbors. At this time, I'd love for you to join me in the singing of this next song, King of Kings.
The scripture reading for today is select verses from Acts chapter 8. And Saul approved of their killing him. That day, a severe persecution began against the church in Jerusalem, and all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and Samaria. Devout men buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him. But Saul was ravaging the church by entering house after house. Dragging off both men and women, he committed them to prison. Now those who were scattered went from place to place, proclaiming the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. Now when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south, to the road that leads down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Hey, good morning, village people. My name is Travis Garner. I'm the lead pastor here at the village, and I am really, really excited this morning because I think you're in for a real treat. Um, the Reverend Toy King is with us, and she's going to be bringing our message this morning. Toy was with us uh, about a year ago, and after after she preached on a Sunday morning at the village, I did have several people say to me that that you know maybe perhaps I didn't have to do the preaching anymore at the village. Maybe we could just have toy here with us and you know I could still be around and I, I didn't have my feelings too hurt by that it's fine but I'm so excited because toy is such a passionate person and she loves Jesus and I think God's gonna have some really incredible things to say to our church through her this morning and so just want to invite you to give a really big village online welcome to um, to our friend the Reverend Toy King good morning church it is a blessing to be with each and every one of you today. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Reverend Toy King. I am one of the associate pastors at Brentwood United Methodist Church. And it was truly a blessing when Brother Travis asked me if I would like to preach for him while he's away on vacation. Of course, I was so excited to do that. I am so grateful and so blessed to be here with you this morning. So friends, I just invite you to get to relax and allow the spirit to move us this morning as we continue with the sermon series, The Church Scattered. But before we begin, I invite us into an attitude of prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, awesome God, loving God, our Father in heaven. Lord, we just love you and we thank you and we praise you, God. We magnify your holy name. God, thank you so much for allowing the church to continue to be the church, even when the church is scattered here and there. God, thank you so much for allowing this opportunity for your word to be preached and taught this morning, God. We thank you so much. Use me, God, for your glory. God, we invite your Holy Spirit into this sacred place right now. Holy Spirit, come. Holy Spirit, crucify my flesh so that your spirit may rise up within me. Preach your word, teach your word to your people. Holy Spirit, go out from where I am and everyone under the sound of my voice, God, allow the Holy Spirit to begin to stir them up as well. May everyone receive, God, this message, God. May it challenge us, God, and call us into action, God, because we are still the church wherever we are the church is as well. So God, I ask you to bless Travis and his family while they are away. Bless the village church, God, and bless our time together. Speak, Lord, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. This is so exciting, the church scattered. I know during this time of pandemic, a lot of us are under stress because we love to be together, to be the community, to embrace each other. Oh, I'm a hugger. So I miss just hugging all of my brothers and sisters and kissing folks on their cheeks and all oh, just being in conversation. Oh, it's so uplifting to be in the house of the Lord. But during this pandemic time, 
it has been isolation and it feels like you're alone and you're probably saying to yourself, Lord, how can we have church if we're not in the church? Well, brothers and sisters, I'm here to tell you this morning, baby, we are the church. We're the church in action. We're the church in motion. See, the church is wherever you are because the church foundation is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And if you have the gospel of Jesus Christ in you, you are the church. So church can happen wherever you are. So in Acts 8, we're going to talk about the church being scattered and how they preached wherever they went. Wherever they went. See, this is going to be a call for us to preach wherever we go because we are the church. We're the church with two legs and two hands, baby. We're moving and grooving for God. So we don't have to be confined in the walls. We can go outside of the walls. So that way the word is scattered everywhere our feet tread. Amen, amen, and amen. So in Acts 8, we pick up where Stephen has been stoned to death. And so we see our brothers and sisters they're getting ready to start another phase of a persecution. Our scripture tells us that Saul is so persistent in harassing and persecuting Christians. He's going in and out of their homes and he's trying to arrest them and put them in jail. But I'm here to tell you that this scripture tells me that persecution cannot stop proclamation. Let the church say amen. Even in a persecution, Church, we cannot be stopped. See, the gospel of God will continue anyway. And what the disciples don't understand and the believers of that time, what they don't understand is that Jesus told them in Acts 1 and 8 that believers would be witnesses in Judea and Samaria. So see, this is just setting up the next stage of God's wonderful plan. Amen. Amen. Scripture tells us that during that time, all of the believers were scattered throughout the countryside of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. The apostles stayed back in Jerusalem, and I believe this allowed them to stay there in the confines of Jerusalem so they could continue to maintain what they had started. But the blessing is that the believers, those that were under the leadership of the apostles, they were able to travel to and fro. So Philip, let's look at Philip this morning. Before we talk about the message, let's look at the messenger. Now Philip, he was one of the seven and his role in Jerusalem was he was one of the seven that was allowed to distribute the food amongst the people. So that means he was a worker for God. He was a believer, you all. He was a lay person, you all. Yes, God can use anybody. Church, we are the church. And so Philip, he flees to Samaria. Now, something amazing happens when he gets there. Because when you have the gospel of Jesus Christ in you, huh, everywhere you go, things turn upside down. And things begin to happen that you're not even aware of. So scripture tells us, now Philip went down to the city of Samaria and proclaimed the Messiah to them. And when Philip opens his mouth and begins to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, it's to take place because the proclamation of Jesus Christ always brings transformation, deliverance, and healing. So scripture tells us as Philip is preaching and teaching the word of God, the lame are beginning to walk. Exorcisms, evil spirits are coming out of people. Yes, they're being delivered and they're being healed. People are hearing the word. They are seeing the word in action through the miracles. See, Philip is full of the Holy Spirit. Philip is a true believer of Jesus Christ. Philip is equipped for his task. See, church, even though you're not in the building, the Holy Spirit will equip you for the task ahead of you. Scripture also tells us at the same time 
that Philip is preaching and teaching the word, you know, you always got to have somebody that opposes you all the time. And so here is Simon the sorcerer. And Simon the sorcerer, he's performing magic. He's doing special tricks. And so people are following him. But I'm going to tell you right now, when the word of Jesus Christ is proclaimed, baby, even those that oppose you will turn around and they will follow you. Amen. And let me tell you, the scripture tells us that Simon, the one that opposed God and said he came from a great power, he turned his life around and he began to listen to Philip and to follow Philip. See, when the church is scattered and the word of God is proclaimed, every tongue will confess, every knee will bow that Jesus is Lord. And what that tells me, brothers and sisters, is that Jesus Christ, the name of Jesus Christ is superior over any other name, any other little G that's out there. The big G always reigns over anything. See, Jesus will make everything bow down and be below. <laughs> this is good, church. Amen. So, you know, good news travels fast. <laughs> this reminds me of a previous job that I used to have. And I was the, I served as associate director. And so my role was to make sure that all the daily operations were done and that everyone from the guest to the staff they were in a safe environment and everyone was acting accordingly. So we had a couple of guests that decide that they're going to act up in the laundry area and they want to get loud and all of this and their attitude and behavior is being disruptive. So the staff member says, no, 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 we can't have this in here. You guys got to go on and we can't do that. If you're not going to behave yourself, you got to go. Well, they, they don't pay the staff member any attention. So the staff member comes and gets me. So when I come back there, I, I say the exact same thing that my staff member says, but it was something about the authority that I possessed that it changed and transformed that situation. First of all, what they did is they apologized. So the two guys that were getting into the ruckus and were going to get to fighting, they began to apologize. They apologized to my staff member. They apologized to me and they asked, could they stay in the facility? Well, of course, we allowed them to stay as long as they would conduct themselves in an orderly fashion. Amen. And so that just reminded me of that when I read this part in verse 14, where it says, now, when the apostles at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. Mm. So, you know, good news travels fast. And the good thing about good news is that, hey, it'll bring people together. So what you have to understand right here, something powerful, something amazing is beginning to happen. So, brothers and sisters, now what we have is so amazing and magnificent because God's plan is going into action. Now we're going to another level True reconciliation is beginning to happen because you see John and Peter, they are apostles from Jerusalem, the Christian church, the pure Jews. And so they have the spirit of God within them. They are the true church. And so now they're coming down because they've heard something like what? You mean to tell me that Philip, one of ours, Philip has come down here and turned Samaria upside down and they are accepting the word of God. They are becoming believers, believers in what we believe in, the same gospel that we believe in. They are worshiping the same God that we worship. They are believing in the same Jesus that we are believing in. Oh, we got to see this. And scripture tells us that they go. And when they get there, they are amazed at what they see. See, good news travels fast, baby, when it's the truth. And the truth will set you free. And they saw it with their own eyes. They saw God's wonder-working power in action. And what I love at that point, they didn't question God. They didn't doubt what they believed. No, what they did, church, is they prayed. They prayed. Scripture tells us that they prayed. And when they prayed, they prayed that each and every believer under the sound of their voices would receive the Holy Spirit. Woo 
And church, when they prayed, scripture tells us that their prayer was answered because everyone received the Holy Spirit. And now unification is in action right before them. Everyone is coming together. Everyone under the same spirit. Remember, there's one spirit and they all are filled with that same spirit. So now they're reconciling back together. Remember, Jesus told them in Acts 1 and 8 that you would go and you would witness to Judea and Samaria. And so now we see in Samaria, it is happening. When the gospel is proclaimed and the Holy Spirit is in the midst, the Holy Spirit unites us with God, with Jesus Christ, and with one another. John and Peter came laying hands on believers. This sealed the deal. And here we go with Simon. See, sometimes... <laughs> Even when we think we're doing well and, you know, we're doing everything in the name of Jesus Christ, you know, every now and then we can get beside ourselves like Simon. So here's Simon. He's believed he's been baptized. He's following Philip. But then he notices, whoo, everybody's getting his spirit and, and John and Peter are laying hands on folks. He wants to do this again. His old self tried to creep up again. See, sometimes if we're not careful and if we're not in the word of God like we truly need to be, sometimes our old self will creep back up. So he thinks I can buy my way in. I can buy this gift. And what I love, Peter calls him out. But Peter rebukes him in love and Peter rebukes him with the truth. But what I love about it, he does not leave Simon there. What Peter does after that, he says, you need to pray. You need to repent and you need to ask God for forgiveness. And you need to ask God to deliver you from the sin that is within you. See, that's in the church. Now, look at here in this scripture. A lot of things have happened. There are a lot of action verbs that have happened. There's been transformation, reconciliation. There's been salvation. People have been baptized. People have received the Holy Spirit. They weren't in the building when they received this. No, they were out in Samaria in the street, y'all. The church was in the street. The church was in the hood. The church was everywhere. The church didn't have walls confining it. No, the church was wide open. And it was invitation to everyone. See, when the spirit of God is in you and the good news is in you, you can't be still. So as we move on through chapter eight, we notice that Philip sees all this happening. But see, one thing about the Lord, when it's there. You got to go because you still got other assignments to do. You can't stay stuck and stagnant in that one place. You've got to continue to move and allow the Holy Spirit to order your steps and tell you to go. So the scripture tells us in the latter part of chapter eight, it says. He was filled, was instructed by an angel of the Lord. It said, get up and go. Scripture says he didn't hesitate. He didn't doubt. No, he was obedient. It comes back and tells us, and he got up and went. See, when you got the spirit of the living God in you, baby, when the good news is in you, you have got to share it. You have got to move. You have got to go. And when the spirit say move, baby, you have got to move. And scripture tells us, Philip moved. So now, and the thing about it, you never know where the spirit is going to lead you. You know what I mean? So here he is. It leads him down this wilderness, deserted area of town, you know. And I'm sure he's walking like, okay, Lord, I'm following you. Where you lead me, I shall go. And then here comes a eunuch. And he hears him reading the scripture as he's beginning to pass by. Because in those ancient times, they didn't read the scriptures real low and took silently to themselves. No, they read the scriptures real loud. Yes, they proclaimed the good news out loud. We need to try that sometimes when you're places. And so scripture says, as he begins to say the good news out loud, Philip hears the word. See, this is the thing. The word connects us. See, the church is connected by the word 
word of God. It doesn't matter where you go. Now, Philip's walking and the eunuch is riding, but the word of God is proclaimed out loud. And so Philip hears the word that he's used to. And Philip knows that's the word of God. And so immediately Philip allows the spirit to lead him and he bounces into action. You know what? Because when you have the spirit of God in you and the good news, the gospel is inside of you. Every time you hear the word, it should set you on fire to say, Lord, what must I do? What do I need to do? Philip took that opportunity and he asked a powerful question. He said, do you understand what you are reading? <laughs> And the eunuch responds, well, how could I when no one's here to teach me? And Philip knew that was his opportunity because, see, you have to meet people where they are. You can't make people be what you want them to be. That is not how the word of God is proclaimed. You meet people on the road where they are and you began to teach and preach to them the good news because see the eunuch wanted to know like a lot of our brothers and sisters probably want to know who is this person in the prophet Isaiah is speaking of who is he talking about and immediately Philip said let me tell you about a man named Jesus Ooh, church that's church no matter where we are we need to be out there y'all God is calling the church to an opportunity to get out of yourself. Forget about that pew that you were sitting on. Forget about that building that you drive to every Sunday. You are the church. God is validating you to go. Therefore, preach the gospel to everyone that's willing to listen. That is our role. Remember the great commission. We are to go and make disciples of every nation. We can't do that in the building all the time. We have to get out there. So wherever you are in your life, on your journey, you have been validated by God. If you have the Holy Spirit in you, you have been baptized. You believe in Jesus Christ, that Jesus is your Lord and your Savior. You are the church and you need to tell somebody about how good God has been to you. Stop, stop by, see a friend, call someone and tell them, hey, let me tell you about my friend named Jesus. In closing, friends. What we saw here in this scripture is a lot of things that take place, most things and some things that don't take place in the church. I mean, sometimes people come to church and they're not delivered of an evil spirit. Sometimes people come to church in the building, I mean, and they don't uh, get filled with the Holy Spirit. So that tells us that the old Holy Spirit is operative everywhere. God is everywhere. So God is bigger than the building of the church. We are the church. And God is calling us as the church scattered during a time such as this is to go to the highways, the byways, the hard places. And to preach and teach the word of Jesus Christ to our brothers and our sisters to meet them where they are and preach and teach them the word and invite them to be a part of what God is doing. Because when the word of God is proclaimed, just like the eunuch and the Samaritans, it begins to invite everyone into inclusion. The church of God includes all of us. The church of God invites all of us to the table. I love you brothers and sisters. God loves you more. But even though we're not in the building together, we are still connected by the word of God, by the saving grace of Jesus Christ, and by the spirit of the Holy Spirit that dwells within us. So go forth, my brothers and sisters, and preach and teach the word of Jesus Christ everywhere you go, welcoming everyone you encounter. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let the church say, Amen. I told you that was going to be awesome. And um, I hope you'll share that with a friend. We're going to go into a time now where we share in communion and prayer. And communion is, uh, communion is really a time where even though we're distant physically and socially, we can be connected spiritually. And so uh, if you've got bread or if you've got a cup of juice, I want to invite you to take that now. 
And that bread symbolizes for us the body of Christ that's been broken for us. And that cup, juice, water, what you have this morning, that symbolizes the blood of Christ that's been poured out for us. And when we share in that, no matter where we are, no matter where we're sitting, we believe that God is making us one. And so I want to invite you to share in that during this time. You can simply break off a piece of bread and you can you can say out loud or you can think to yourself, this is the body of Christ broken for you. And you can dip it in that cup and you can say or think this is the blood of Christ poured out for you. And if you're there with um, if you're there with other people, you could share around the circle and just serve one another with that. The other thing that we're going to be doing during this time is is praying. And so I want to invite you to share your, your prayer comments or your prayer concerns in the chat thread, in the comment thread over on the side of the screen as we're having this time together. And so I just want to invite you to join us now in this time of prayer and communion. I'm going to pray for us and then we'll, we'll start. God, we love you. We thank you for Reverend Toy being with us this morning. And right now, I pray that you pour out your Holy Spirit on us as we're gathered here. And you'd pray out, you pour out your Holy Spirit on this, these gifts of bread and the cup that you'd make them be for us the body and blood of Christ so that we can be the body of Christ to the world. And so God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, make us one with you, make us one with each other and make us one in ministry to all the world. In Jesus name. Amen. And so friends, we'll now share in this time of communion and prayer. thanks again for being here with us this morning. Thank you for sharing those prayer concerns. Here's what I want to ask you to do. If you've seen a, a prayer concern or a comment come through, I want to ask you to take a minute once we're done here, and I want you to pray for the people and for the things that have been shared. 
And if you're sitting around in a living room or kitchen table or somewhere, break room at work, wherever you might be with some other people, I want to ask you and invite you and encourage you to just stop as soon as we're done here and take a minute to pray. Pray now. Pray for the things that have been shared. You could even take a minute and share around the circle if you're there with other people some things that you could be praying about for each other. And I want to ask you to, to simply pray now for those things. I'm going to pray for us now and for the things that have been shared, and uh, and then we'll go from there. So let's pray. God, we love you. We thank you. We thank you again for Pastor Toy being with us this morning and for the message that she shared with us. We thank you for those first disciples who preached the word wherever they went. We thank you for the fact that the church isn't a place that we go, uh, but the church is us as people who are sent out to share and, and to love in the name of Jesus. So God, give us courage this week as we seek to do that. God, we, we pray for all the things that have been shared and all the things that haven't been shared. We pray for your healing to be at work. We pray for your grace and goodness to be at work. We pray for, pray for your love to be put on display. God, we pray for the courage that we need to share what it is that we have to share to share the ways that you're at work in our lives with other people. So God, I pray this this week for opportunities to share and, and for the courage to do it when we're presented with those opportunities. So God, we love you. We thank you for Jesus. It's in his name that we pray. And everybody said or typed, amen, amen. Well, it's been so good to be here with you all this morning. Thanks again for tuning in and being here with us in this kind of strange time. And I'm just glad for the power of technology that's allowing us to connect. Don't forget that you can hop on over to our Village Kids YouTube page if you've got kids in the house or you're a kid at heart and, uh, and, and take part in our Village Kids worship this morning. If you're new with us and you're looking for some next steps in your faith, I'd invite you and encourage you uh, to fill out that connect card online. And, uh, and to do that right now, because we'd love to connect with you and hear your story. Um, if you want to be part of the ministries of this church through your financial giving, we'd encourage and invite you to do that as well. Um, it's been so good to be here with you. And um, it looks like it looks like our one hour being the church gathered has almost run out for the week. And it's time for us to step with boldness and courage into the next 167 hours when we're the church scattered. And so I'm praying for you as you step out in faith uh, that we can be like the apostles and we'll preach the word wherever it is that we go and that because of us, people's lives will be changed. So that's my prayer for you and for me this week. Hope you have a great week. Can't wait to see you soon.